Check, check. <coughs> Section 9.2b is about solving equations by factoring. In this whole chapter, you're going to learn a different method of factoring in each section, and then you're going to learn how to solve equations using that method of factoring. The basis of everything that we do when we solve is this property called the zero product property. And before I define it, I want to look at these examples. If you take anything and multiply it by zero, you get a zero. And these show you that 4 minus 4 times 0 equals 0, and anything times 0 is 0. Well, the zero product property says if the product of two factors is 0, then at least one of those factors must be 0. In other words, if I multiply a times b and I get an answer of 0, then either a has to be 0 or b has to be 0. That's the zero product property. And we're going to use that idea to solve equations like this. Here we have two factors. Now instead of having a number times a number, we have a binomial times a binomial. But according to the zero product property, for this to work, either x minus 2 has to equal 0, or 4x minus 1 has to equal 0. So what you can do now is you can solve each equation individually to find out what number can be plugged in for x to make this a 0. Now it's real simple, I think, to figure this out, but I'm going to do the work for you. So either x has to be a 2, or over here adding 1, and then dividing by 4, x has to equal 1 fourth. So what we can say is we can write a solution that says either 1 fourth or 2 is a solution to this equation. In other words, 1 fourth or 2, if I plug it in for x, will make this equation equal to 0. Here's another example using the zero product property. I have an a times an a plus 5. Since it equals 0, I know that one of those factors must be 0, or both of them. So I set a equal to 0, and I set a plus 5 equal to 0. Over here, I'll solve by subtracting 5. I end up with a equals negative 5. So either a equals 0 or negative 5 will solve this equation and make it true. In this example, we're asked to solve but the problem is it's not equal to zero, so we can't use the zero product property. So first thing we have to do is get this equal to zero. So I'm going to subtract 7x from both sides. So I'm going to have x squared minus 7x, because you can't combine those, those aren't like terms, equals zero. So now I can use the zero product property, but I can't until I get two factors. Right now these are not factors, they're not groups that are being multiplied. But I do know how to break this up by using a GCF, and this is why it's in this section, because we just learned how to take a GCF out. So look at this binomial, I can take an x out, and what am I left with? x minus 7. So now, having factored that, I now have two factors, I can set them equal to 0, because the zero product property says so, and then I'll solve this one by adding 7, and I'll get x equals 7. So my solution here is 0 or 7. In our last example here, we need to get one side equal to zero so that we can solve it. Um, I like to put things in descending order, so in this one I'm going to subtract the 4y so that I can keep this 12y positive, 12y squared minus 4y. And then instead of putting the equal zero over here, I'm actually going to put it on the right side just because I like the way that that looks better. So now, uh, if I'm going to set one of these things equal to zero, they have to be factors. And right now these are not factors, but I can factor it by pulling out a GCF. Take out a 4y, and I'm left with a 3y minus 1. Now that it's factored, I can use the zero product property by setting each group equal to zero, or each factor equal to zero, and then solving. Divide by 4. Zero divided by anything is just zero. and then divide by 3, so y equals 1 third. So my two solutions put in squiggly brackets are 0 and 1 third. The last thing I'd like to do is give you these steps here that you can write down and follow. These are the basic steps that you're going to use to solve equations by factoring. You're going to use these steps throughout the entire chapter here. Step number one is you always want to get one side of an equation equal to 0. And we actually did that 
uh, right here. This was step number one. Step number two was factor if needed, and we took care of that step right here. If you look back at some of the previous ones, um, we didn't need to factor in this example because it was already factored. But in the last one here, in the last two actually, we've had to factor each one of those to get them into, uh, into two groups or two factors. Step number three, set each factor equal to zero. We did that right here. And then step number four, ask to solve. And right down here, all of this work here is step number four. So these four steps you should get familiar with um, because we're going to use them in every section of this chapter.